Hey everyone, Ashley from Petfluencer Secrets here. Hey, in this video, we're gonna be diving into the three skills that are so important for you to have as a successful pet influencer. But let's be honest, any type of content creator or influencer, as you may call yourself, can really benefit from these three skills. So we're actually gonna talk through multiple action steps that you can implement today to make a really big change in your profiles and to make a really big change in the content that you put out. So we wanna dive right in. And the very first skill, although it sounds kind of basic, it actually is so imperative because it makes a huge difference if you are an experienced creator because you can relate. So the very first thing that you have to really instill in yourself and really need to practice is literally self-confidence. And okay, I know so many of you be like, okay, be confident, move on. but. In reality, it actually is so much more complicated because there's actually a lot of psychological barriers that you need to overcome in order to actually put out the most genuine content that you really are passionate about. And the biggest thing with this, I can completely relate because I have been a content creator for practically five years now. And for about the first year and a half of being a pet influencer or creating content about my cats over there, I was afraid to show my face for again, like almost two years. Now, as a pet creator, you don't have to show your face. In fact, one of the biggest reasons why so many people love being pet influencers is because you don't have to show your face. I was afraid to show my face and I, this was hard because I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of people judging me or most importantly, and I know this is something you are relating to, you're probably afraid of people that you know finding out about your content because deep within there, seated in there, typically is the fear that other people you know are gonna see you, that you may fail, and then they will think badly of you. So this ties into self-confidence because if you've heard of imposter syndrome, I'm not gonna do a full lesson on imposter syndrome because there's so much to go through, but Imposter syndrome is essentially that idea that you're not worthy. And this really sucks because if you really battle with imposter syndrome, you're not going to charge the rates that you deserve. You're not going to show your face on camera when you probably should. You're not going to be creating the best content, creating as frequently or consistently. You're not going to push yourself out there because you're just going to be afraid to push the limits or push the boundaries or even just get outside of your comfort zone. But as you grow, and especially for those of you who are have been around and are more experienced creators, you know that self-confidence can really put a barrier on your growth. Because again, we, it ties right into that idea of you're not going to take the challenges, take the risks. You're not going to push yourself outside of that comfort zone so that you can create better content. You're not going to spend the money that you probably should on better equipment, better lighting, all the little things that will help you grow as a successful influencer and content creator. And most importantly, if you don't believe you can, you won't. It won't happen. If you don't believe that you could have a million subscribers, or if you don't believe that you can seriously make $15,000 a month, it won't happen, right? What you believe is going to translate into what is in reality. So when it comes to self-confidence, this again is so important to realize that what you believe is possible will be your reality. But not just that, it's all about being confident in yourself, being confident in the content you produce, being confident in yourself that you're worthy of the content that you create. But going into the next one, the second skill that is so important to work on as you are growing your career and journey as an influencer online is delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is huge as a content creator and it's so hard. If you don't know much about finances or money, delayed gratification is talked a lot about in the financial circles because of course, if you think about stocks, for example, you have to know that you put in your effort now or you put in your money now. And then in the future, you're going to be rewarded more than if you just tried to take out the money now, right? So if you invest your money right now and say in one year, you take your money out versus in 50 years, you take your money out. Obviously the output is going to be so much different. So if you are a new content creator and you are putting effort in now and you're like, mm, in three weeks, I am just going to blow up and it's going to be great. And then three weeks comes and you're like, oh, well that sucks. I didn't blow up or 
you know, I didn't go viral or whatever. That's not delayed gratification, right? Knowing that you're putting in the effort now, you're learning now, you're growing now because down the road, you're gonna be better at your filming. You're gonna be better at your voiceovers. You're gonna be better at your video editing. You're gonna learn more every single time that you produce content. If you expect to be perfect right now, you're not going to be perfect. And mm, I can relate because I have been a content creator for about five years now, and I actually was a content creator in a different niche before joining Pet Influencing. And I put in about two years of consistent effort on YouTube as a blogger. And let's be real here, I did not get a good return on my investment. I mean, I seriously put in dozens, if not gosh, hundreds, I seriously, hundreds of hours put into creating content, learning and growing. And yet the amount of money that I was receiving as a monthly income was bad. It was not good. And that was just really, really disappointing. But as I grew and then I learned about pet influencing and then it, things started blowing up and I started growing and using the skills that I learned early on, it made all the difference. So as a beginner, the biggest thing that I need you to instill in your head is that there's going to be a three month hump coming. If you have not been a creator for over three months, then you have not experienced a three month hump. Okay. And so those of you who've been around, you at least know what I'm talking about. The three month hump is where you are creating for about 90 days, right? How long does it take to create a new habit? About 90 days, right? So you've been creating content, creating content, and then you just burn out, right? You don't feel like you get a good return on your investment with your time. It is really difficult. You haven't instilled these new habits into your lifestyle. And then you give up. You say, nah, it's not worth it. This is all lie. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. And it's usually really filtered through a negative lens. And so that three month hump, when you overcome that, that's when things start getting better and better and better because you know, with that idea of delayed gratification, you know that in the long run, it's going to be so worth it. And you're on a marathon and not on a sprint. So let's dive into the third skill. So the third skill that you need to hone down when it comes to being a content creator or influencer online is the idea that you need to be willing to change. Ooh, this is hard because I literally still battle with this all the time. And be, having a willingness to change is actually really built into how much you talk negatively about yourself. And what I mean is this, so whenever I create a video, on any of the platforms that I have been on, when it does bad, I associate that with my self-worth. So I usually associate that with shame or guilt and especially rejection, thinking, well, what I created wasn't good enough. I'm not good enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I obviously, no one wants to listen to me. Obviously no one really cares, yada, yada, yada. And it's so it's associated with negative talk. What I need you to consider is that you need to distance yourself from associating your worth with the content that you create. If a video does bad, that's actually a great thing because it gives you that trigger to be able to analyze what was it that actually was bad, right? What was it that made that not work? Was it the timing of your post? Was it the title? Was it the thumbnail? Was it your description? Probably not. Was it just the content? Was it something about copyrighted audio? I mean, there is a huge list of things that you can go through to figure out why your video did bad and things that you can improve and things that you can look at your next video and be able to implement into your next video. Instead of associating that with, well, I suck. This was terrible. Okay. What's the point of this? As a beginner, you're going to be really dealing with trial and error. So you're going to be trialing new trends. You're going to be trialing different ways to put on captions or different thumbnails and different descriptions and different titles. And you're going to be trying all these different things. A lot of them aren't going to work. But when you find something that works, that is exciting. But you have to realize that algorithms are constantly changing. I mean, we are at this point of like this exponential curve and this exponential curve, we're right like here 
where things are exploding for content creators and influencers. Things were kind of figuring it out. Everyone was figuring out the platforms and new creators were coming along. And then now things are kind of steady and more set in their way. And algorithms have kind of figured things out. And now things are going to get really, really good for content creators. So it's so important to realize that you might have to make some changes to reflect algorithm changes. And you might have to make changes to your videos with different regulations and whatever it is, maybe your audience starts shifting and changing. Being willing to change is such an important skill to develop, but know that if you are more experienced, being really set in your ways is actually not really good because you do need to have that willingness to make those changes. That's where a lot of creators had dropped off back in like 2021, 2022, because of the idea of shorts, right? Not just YouTube shorts, but short form content. And with short form content, the people who used a lot of static photos, say on Instagram, or those who did a lot of long form content, like on YouTube, really, really got affected from this. And that's because short form content is all the rage right now. Short form content is a really big deal. And if you are not comfortable with making that, you're going to be left behind. So with that said, what are the three skills that are so important to have as a content creator to be able to boost yourself to be more successful? First is self-confidence. You need to realize imposter syndrome is very real and you need to know that it is something you're going to experience at some point. Second is delayed gratification, having that ability to overcome that three month hump as a new beginner and realizing that the future result is going to be so much better than what you get in the short term is key. And then third is your willingness to make changes. There are always going to be changes, especially if you are creating shorts and short form content, things are literally changing by the day. So having that willingness to reflect on negative outcomes, like less views is so important to not beat yourself up. So with all this said, make sure that you grab your workbook and your mini course down in the description below, and you will learn even more about pet influencing through your free mini course. And let's go ahead and start a discussion about what you are experiencing as a content creator down in the comments. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.